What up, what up? That's the Miss Squad, and welcome back, guys. Here's your boy Sean. And your girl. Yes, yes, yes. Squad, how are you guys doing today? We hope you guys are absolutely amazing. Yes, guys, and if not, let's turn it around right now with some good energy and some good content. All right, so my lovely wife, what do we have today? All right, today we'll be reacting to what John Lennon said about God and in hell. What hold up, wait a minute. John Lennon said about what God John in hell. Lennon said about God in hell is that the devil? Where did okay. this come from? I'm ready. All right, guys. So before we get into it, make sure you like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and also turn on your post notification bell so you guys are notified. We're ready to dig right into it, guys. Here we go. Good energy, good content. Let's see what we got. Damn. Wow. The title alone. What is my view on hell? Well, it is a place that you do not want to go to. As a matter of fact, uh. you would not even wish this eternal punishment on your worst enemy. How would I know this? Let's just say that a bad dream. One college night turned into a horrifying experience. You may say that I was merely hallucinating and I thought the same thing at first, but mm -hmm. then I noticed that I woke up with my heart pounding. I was so frightened that I put my covers over my head and I was not able to move for what felt like an hour. This has never happened to me as a result of a bad dream. These effects confirmed to me that what I experienced was real. If it was not real, I would not be even writing this experience down. Trust me, I am merely trying to warn you of a very real and very present afterlife. Sit back and listen as I try to inform you of this tormenting experience. What was supposed to be an early morning slumber turned into a nightmare. It was early Wednesday morning and I was trying to get some sleep for my approaching school day. In the middle of my comfortable sleep, my dream suddenly darkened and I was in a dark place. I did not know what was going on until I started to hear the screams of billions of people. Next thing I knew, I was surrounded by flames that were way over my head. However, I knew that I was not dead because I was not suffering like the people around me. Not feeling the actual effects, let me know that I was merely a spectator. As I was running around hell, people sensed that I was not here forever and I was going to eventually return to Earth. They started running towards me to tell me their stories of why they ended up there and their warnings to mankind. Let me tell you what each person told me was very informative. Throughout my experience, I saw different sections of hell. I also met some people who were rather successful during their lifetimes. When I talk about sections, I mean that hell is organized. Everyone who is in a certain section went to hell for the same sin. Also, the type of sin that you committed on earth determines the level of torture that you experience. One section I visited was the unsaved section. These people were nice, good people. Unfortunately, they died without Christ. They were in the lighter part of hell because the fire was only up to their waist. However, they were still in agony. As I left that section to explore hell some more, I noticed that I was continually falling, and the flames were getting higher and higher. As I was getting deeper and deeper into the abyss, another soul clasped me. He told me that he was a white plantation owner. In the South, during his lifetime, he owned many slaves. By this remark, I learned that I was in the racism part of hell. When I started to look around, I noticed a lot of black power leaders and racist whites. The plantation owner looked at me and said, Baby, tell people that color does not matter. I wasted my whole life using this white supremacy mindset. I was intrigued. Because race is a topic that still has many people bound today. However, I felt like I had more to see. I thanked him for his story and went on. As I continued my quest, I ran into business moguls. 
The next section that I ran into was the money section. This section was filled with rich CEOs, merchants, wealthy people, and people in general who chased after money their whole life. The collective story these souls told me were wealthy businessmen who did not care about others. All they cared about was their money and material things. When they showed up in front of God, they tried to woo Him by telling Him what degrees they had, what rich family they came from, what company they owned, the billions of dollars they amassed throughout their lifetimes. But the Lord only answered, I do not care about any of that. Wow. Go away. I never knew you. One soul looked at me and said, Money does not matter because you cannot pay your way out to this place, and the rich Ooh. has to be judge, just like the poor. Taking his quote to heart, I thanked the money chasers and went on. As I kept going on, souls were clinging on to me, eager to give warnings. All of them were saying how it is so important to forgive people. I was now in the unforgiveness part of hell. They let me know that this alone sent them to their eternal death. I also thanked them and trekked on. During the remainder of my experience, I only ran into celebrities and historical figures. I was wandering for a while, and then I noticed a man surrounded by this mass of flames. As I went closer, he spotted me and started walking towards me. When I could finally make out of him, through all the darkness, I realized that he was John Lennon. Let me tell you, he was rather angry. He cursed throughout his whole testimonial. He blamed God for his predicament and said, What kind of a man put people through this torture and not warn people beforehand? While I was conversing with him, he told me that this was the musician part of hell. The Hollywood section was nearby. As I looked to the other wow. side, I noticed all of these famous Hollywood stars burning together. When I turned my attention back to John, another soul jumped through the flames that were surrounding us and appeared. In an instant, I knew that he was Michael Jackson. He looked like how he was supposed to look, a 50-year-old African-American man with a wide nose and an afro. He looked nothing like how he looked before he died. When I saw the pain in his face, my heart was broken. He didn't say anything to me, but I knew that he was in deep agony and despair. Unlike John Lennon, he was very remorseful for his past life and actions. You could tell this by the petrified look on his face. Even though I felt sorry for these musicians, there was nothing I could do. This is the price they have to pay for selling their souls to the devil for fame and fortune. I thought I had seen it all. Little did I know that the worst was yet to come. I was in for a ride. Once I left the musician section, I kept walking. Suddenly, this hole in the ground caught my attention. It was a very wide hole in the middle of the ground. I stood back for a while because I didn't know what to make of it. Soon, I realized that there were a vast number of groans coming out of that hole. Then I saw hands clinging to the top of the pit, and I realized that souls were actually trying to climb out of this deep pit. Most were not successful, wow. however. The ones that managed to make it out of the pit were quickly thrown back in by demons. Once I saw that, I decided to go near the hole and peek inside. I was in for a surprise. This pit was far deeper than any pit that I encountered so far. I saw people trying to climb out from way out of the vast darkness of this pit. However, I noticed something else. A little ways down from the opening of the hole, there was a leveled piece of land which had a smaller hole in the middle of it. The hole in the middle of it was the continuation of the pit that the people were trying to climb out of. On this leveled piece of land, there was a man standing there looking down at the people trying to climb up. He looked up at me. He was Adolf Hitler. I knew then that this mini section was the section for dictators and evil leaders. He what? did not say a word. He just looked at me with that same straight, mean face that he has in all his pictures. When he turned away from me, he resumed 
Looking at the people climbing up from the much deeper trench, he did not help them up in any way. I was in for a bigger surprise as I walked away. Okay, so it's sections in hell, celebrities, politicians, um, unforgiven people, entertainers. See, my experience of hell was nothing this, like I this. don't. This this just doesn't sound like my experience was. Totally different when I traveled, but I guess like you're gonna be walking through Hollywood and and, and you know like when I, he is describing this is hard to believe. It sounds like you know he had a very scary experience, most definitely, most definitely, because I guess there are levels to everything. I so, guess so but when he's describing hell in these different levels. Maybe that is, you know, truly what he saw, and it's very scary. Let's it keep is going, very guys. scary. Let's keep going. Here we go. Away from the hole. As I was leaving the area, another person grasped me. When I looked at him, I knew that he was Andy Warhol. And the people who were trying to climb out of the extremely deep hole were homosexuals. He informed me that he had just climbed out of that pit. He said, please. Tell people that homosexuality and gay marriage is wrong. It is against God and homosexuals are in the deepest part of hell. Then a demon grabbed him and threw him back in the pit. Petrified as I was, I started looking for a way out. I was running back through where I started. While I was doing this, I noticed nothing but souls falling from the sky. I realized that these people were fresh from judgment and that the angels were dropping them into hell. I was running and all of a sudden I was no longer in hell. Instead, I was in the judgment room that everyone is appointed to when they die. I noticed two holes. One was in the ceiling of the room and it had light shining through it. This represented heaven. The other hole was on the floor of the room and it had fire coming through it. This obviously represented hell. Heaven's hole was closing up and hell's was widening and becoming bigger. This signified that a slimmer amount of people are making it to heaven each day. There is a big increase in the amount of people ending up in hell each day. Before I knew it, I woke up scared. This experience was an eye-opener for me. It not only taught me how to get my life together, but it showed me how mankind is truly in trouble. I am still amazed by this experience because I had no clue how I got to hell or the judgment room. I just appeared. The moral is this. Forgive, come to Jesus, and ask God for a pure heart and to help you make it through life. You do not want to end up in hell, nor do you want anyone else there. Just remember, the biggest fight in life is for your soul. Mm. Thank you for watching to the end. Please help us get this message out to the rest of the world by forwarding it to all of your friends and family members. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so right away so that you can receive other videos on God's word in the days and weeks ahead. I am grateful to you. And may God continue to bless you till our next meeting. All right. Um, Woo! What do you believe in, heaven or hell? I believe in heaven. I believe in both. And I know it's a hell. One doesn't exist without the other. Yeah. Um, it was a deep story, though. I It, it just threw me off with... With the entertainers that, you know, that he was naming. Um, I don't know. It was just something about that. It, it was just something about that. It was very scary. And the point of it is, you know, we all had to turn from our wicked ways and, and let God into our hearts. Yeah. And follow. Follow. Follow God. Follow, follow God. Jesus. 
and follow his rules. Yes. You know. Um, as we, we, learn we more all more about have wicked Bible, ways. You know, it's, it's just, everything is like, it's like starting to make sense. Because um, when you wasn't raised with the Bible, you know, the, the teaching of the Bible, it's like you're not aware of certain things until you read, you know, start reading the Bible and then you start understanding how things work and how life works. But um, God is real and heaven is real. And I, I believe that Jesus is coming back for his people. And I believe that everyone will definitely have that judgment day. So you got to live right. You got to live righteous. You got to live through the word of God. Wow. But that's, that's a good story, though. Definitely. Yeah. It's definitely a good story, you know. Um, and we need more like this, guys. You know. So go ahead and give this video a big fat thumbs up and get inside the comment section. Any type of video like this one you guys want us to react to, please send it to us so we can pick it up. All right, guys. All right. And we thank you in advance. That's our time, guys. And we're signing off. Here's your boy, Sean. And your girl. Yes, yes, yes. Now, have an amazing day on, on purpose. purpose. S&M Squad. Peace.